Hello, hello everybody, how are you all doing today? Uh, welcome, welcome back to my channel, my name is Cyril. I used to be a stem cell researcher and this is why I can tell you about the science behind octocrylline because yes, today I am in addressing <laughs> the, conservers the conservancy. Oof, I've just um, spoken in French, so now my English is going to be difficult. <laughs> so, um, this is a recent paper. Uh, it has been published, like, literally now. It has been done by a French uh, team. So, the title is Benzophenone Accumulates Over Time from the Degradation of Octocrylene in Commercial Sunscreen Products. So, what I'm going to do um, in this video is basically to show you how an article, a scientific article, works basically what they have exactly shown also to show you how bias and i insist on this word bias the authors are and also all the things that basically they should have done and that they did not um, which is let's put it like that very very uh, unfortunate uh, i have published several papers uh, under my own name as a first authors or also as co-authors so i exactly know how it works i have done a lot of them uh, I have probably like around 14, I think I have 14 publications in total, something like that, among them four uh, where I am the first author. Uh, so I think I am well placed to criticize um, this kind of work. Before we just start, I'm going to show you something which is um, a technical data sheet that is from one of the manufacturers from uh, octocrylene in the EU. Uh, I mean, this um, this filter, so octocrylene, uh, can be resold in the EU. So you have uh, this technical data sheet that gives you, first of all, the the name of the product, which is octocrylene. Uh, you also have the product code. Uh, you also have the case number. So every single um, skincare ingredient have a case number, which is simply a uh, a number they telling uh, they are also showing you um, the UV characteristic so basically octocrylene is a UVB absorbent this being said it mostly absorb around 300 nanometers so it means that uh, we are between the UVB and the UVA um, type 2 slightly and then this is something uh, I do not know for the United States or for other countries but in, in the EU I do know this uh, they need to give you the total impurities uh, so in this one they is 2% at maximum of impurities and they state on the paper that benzophenone is uh, at maximum at 200 ppm which is par per millions. So just from the start before diving in we already know that octocrylene does contain benzophenone and this has been authorized uh, in by the EU commission so this is something that is known this is what I mean. So now uh, when we look uh, at a paper before uh, I dive in oh yes something that I forgot to tell you to tell you this paper is in open access so it means that I have put the link uh, in the description box so you can go and download it but before you are doing this and you read this paper because the way that it is written is going to scare you a lot so please uh, watch the whole video before doing it because I'm going to explain everything. So in every uh, scientific paper, uh, you first start with the abstract. The abstract is a sort of summary of the results um, where we also show a little bit of the context. Uh, of course, and especially in skincare, which is a main issue, the abstract is almost like a marketing claim. And what is always very, very important is always to look at the material and methods. So basically how the experiments has been conducted and also just the results by themselves to make sure that they support the claim, which is something that is always uh, like a, it is the quintessence of science. In biology, this is so, so important because depending on the type of experiments, of how you have made the experiment, of how you have analyzed the results, you can come up with different conclusions, basically, or you can also have some info that are not that um, relevant, which is the case of this one. Uh, then you have the introduction. So the introduction is, again, uh, to put things into context and tell you basically what we have known about this and this and how it has been um, shown and blah, blah, blah. So in this one, and especially in this uh, introduction, which is something that I really, really dislike, is that uh, during the whole introduction, they are um, uh, scaring you with benzophenone without never, ever uh, telling you the concentration of benzophenone that was used in the different uh, models. So for example, they tell you benzophenone is associated with a wide range of toxicities, including uh, genotoxicity, carcinogenicity, endocrine disruption. Just after, there's 
also tell you that it induces timine dimerization. So timine dimerization, timine or timine in English? I think in timine. Um, they are um, blocks of the DNA, they are the base of the DNA, that can be linked together. This is the mutation. Guess what? You can have the exact same mutation thanks to UVB. Uh, lovely. Also, on the same topic, in the old paper, they have never ever mentioned the uh, dreadful effect of UVs on the skin. Because guess what? UV is also genotoxicity. It is also carcinogenic. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm going to... Um, uh, to reduce the toxicity from one ingredient. I'm not going to, to tell you right away what uh, is this ingredient, but it's just to highlight my point. So this ingredient, for example, gives you eyes irritation, irritation of the skin, of the nose. It gives you also headache, uh, drowsiness, lassitude, like weakness, exhaustion, necrosis, yes, necrosis of the tissues, <laughs> not really nice. Uh, it also affects the reproductive uh, system. It is also teratogenic. So basically, you can have uh, a mutation in the um, in the embryo. So uh, very, very dangerous. And, uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, some of those effects are very similar to benzophenone. Do you know what is this ingredient? It is simply ethanol. Ethanol is alcohol that you find, for example, in wine. This is exactly the same. So like always, the dose make the poison. This is what is always the most important and the most relevant. Remember something, even water can be toxic to you. If you start to uh, drink water constantly during all the day and all the night, you are going to kill yourself. If you spend your whole time in a bath full of water without never leaving it, your skin is going to decay. This is a, so this is something that we always need to keep in mind. The dose make the poison and at no point in this damn introduction they are talking about that because in all those models, even when you, we see like an effect uh, like the carcinogenicity, the carcinogenicity, gosh, this word also the endocrine disruptors, it is it depends on the dam concentration, which is why it is so important to always discuss it and also the different models, and they did not. Then we have the martial and methods after the introduction that I'm going to briefly um, talk about. So what they have done, they have basically um, um, taken six French um, sunscreens. One of them it does not contain any octocrylene. This is the negative control. And five of them contains octocrylene. And then they have taken, um, what is the number? Let me find out. Um, 11 um, American sunscreen that also contains um, octocrylene. Um, they have calculated first, they have determined uh, the amount of benzophenone uh, when they get the sunscreen and in an aging process. So what they have done, and this is something that is already used in the um, cosmetic industry, is that in order to determine what we call the PAO, which is this little number uh, that you see in this product, this is the Bioderma, the Atoderm Intensive Eye, you have like this um, little sign which is basically like an open cap with 12M, 6M, and etc. Uh, so this is determined like that. So we put uh, the product for six weeks at 40 degrees Celsius with, I think it was 70% of, um, is that it? Yes, with 75% uh, of humidity for six weeks. And after six weeks, this is what we call an age process. So this is used to test your uh, skincare. This is also what is used um, in the EU, and after this aging process, they have looked um, to see if there is uh, an increase of concentration of benzophenone. Uh, the two techniques that they have used, they have uh, first purified it using what we call HPLC, which is a chromatography. This is something that is also um, used a lot in biology, uh, like for example, in order to purify um, DNA fragments and etc. We use it uh, like to, to do like genome sequencing, for example, this technique. And then they have used a mass spectrometer in order to determine the concentration and also uh, if it is or not benzophenone. This is a simple um, at that. I'm not going to go into details and also um, mass spectrometry is absolutely not my forte. That was not my speciality. But just to give you, but the, the way that it has been done, it has been done uh, correctly. And in um, and basically the only work that they have done, uh, which is very sad, you only have two tables in this paper. I'm like, come on, please, can you just work a little bit? The first one uh, that you find in the results is simply the least of um, the different sunscreen with the formula. 
And then you have the table number two, where you have first in the first column, you have the name of the product, then you have the number of the load, which is fine. Uh, then you have what they call the baseline, the baseline of um, uh, benzophenone in milligram per kilograms, but it is also, it also corresponds to ppm, and this is an important uh, piece of information. And then they have the same thing uh, after six weeks, so after the aging process. And then they have determined also, um, this is the geometric mean of the base line. And they did it also like this to have bigger numbers, basically. So uh, there is like this dreadful table. I'm like, uh, why you didn't do just graphs? Can you just work a little bit? So this is what I did. So what I have done, and this is what uh, I'm showing you right here. I have put in this table different uh, things. I'm not going to comment everything. First, the name of the product. So I've just put a number. So you have the control. Then you have the first uh, French sunscreen, which is 1FR. Uh, then the 2FR, etc. Then you, I did the same with the American one. Uh, in the first column, you have, uh, again, exactly what you have, what you have, which is the baseline, then after six weeks, and then you have the mean. Moyenne in French means mean. So from the band's line, so I've just looked at the mean uh, before and after, and then I look at something that is very important, which is the fold change. Why I wanted to do uh, to do it like this? Because what is relevant and what is important is, of course, how much more do we have after the aging process, obviously. And this is what you have in this graph uh, that I've done. So basically I've done the work. So of course for the control, you don't have any benzophenone because this is the negative control. They should have done at least three. But anyway, they only did uh, one. And then what you are going to see is that for the vast majority of sunscreen, actually, you don't even have a twofold increase of benzophenone for most of them. You do have it for the first French one. You also have it for three American ones. So you have number two, you have the number seven, and a little bit more for the number three also. But for most of them, you don't even have a twofold uh, increase. Now, what is even more important obviously it's the exact concentration at the end, like how much do we have, which is something that is very relevant for our health. And this is where it gets very interesting and where also they basically don't really have a point that they are trying to discuss, which is that the concentration could be dangerous for your health. Because as you can see on this graph that I've also done, for most of them, you don't even achieve the 200 ppm. Remember what I have shown you in this, uh, in the beginning of this video, I have shown you a data sheet from one of the manufacturers in Europe that tells you that the maximum concentration of benzophenone that you will find is 200 ppm. And guess what? Before or after the aging process for most sunscreen, whether they are French or American, we are always below 200 ppm. I'm like, and why you didn't discuss it? Why? Maybe because there are uh, these like some shitty business behind it. But anyway, this one that is absolutely true, that is the number seven, that starting from the beginning, we're already like very close to 200 ppm. And indeed, after the aging process, we do have more and we reach more than 400 uh, ppm. So this one is indeed um, a little bit concerning. I didn't went to the to read all the papers, all the toxicology papers about uh, benzophenone, or else I would not have been able <laughs> to do this video. So I cannot really comment about this concentration. What is absolutely crazy, though, is that in the paper, especially in this paper, in the discussion part, this is the part where you need and where you have to discuss it to say, okay, we have observed an increase of the concentration of benzophenone. First, we do have benzophenone from the beginning which is something not new. They also didn't discuss it, even though it was already disclosed by all the manufacturers. So this is something that is also new, um, at least in the EU. So we already know, and most likely 200 ppm um, apply on the skin is not a health concern uh, for now, at least. So they didn't discuss it. And of course, the increase, we also need to discuss it again. And they didn't do it. And uh, exactly like they have done actually in the introduction, they have showed you like, oh my God, this has this effect, this effect. Yes, but what is the damn concentration? This is something that is very important. This is exactly like the recent papers that have shown you that some of the filters can also go into your blood. 
Okay, but is it going to affect our health? Yes or not? This is what is the most important part, especially because we know that UVs, like outside the UVs, are damaging for the skin. And have um, They do have an impact on the health of our skin. And this, of course, they didn't um, really discuss it. Um, in the discussion also, they had like some very disturbing, I would say, sentences that also show you how bad the paper is written and how biased the authors are. Uh, so, for example, they refer to marketing propaganda um, about uh, using sunscreen every single day. So I'm guessing that the authors are against the use of sunscreen every single day. I'm like, did you even read the scientific uh, articles about sun protection every day and etc.? I guess they did not. They, and they also never ever discussed the crazy increase of skin cancer, which is a major health concern. And this one has been proven and proven and proven. And I'm like, no, this is simply not responsible. So basically, that's it. That was really not a good paper. The only thing that we have learned, though, is that we do have an increase of benzophenone over, over time. Is it concerning? In my opinion, yes, it is. Does it mean that the concentration um, is problematic? For most of them, it is not because it is below 200 uh, ppm. Already know, uh, and if you are familiar to my content, that I prefer to recommend anyway sunscreen that are without any octoculin and avobenzone because another thing that is notorious about those two filters is that irritate uh, the skin. So I know that if you are in the United States, it's very difficult to find octoculin and avobenzone free uh, sunscreen unless they use zinc oxide. A good option are Japanese um, sunscreen, for example, and they will be also probably more um, protective basically for your skin. If you st if you are still using um, sunscreen that contain uh, only avobenzone and no octocrylene, are you fine? Yes, of course you are fine. So I hope you did like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you happen to be new to my channel, please consider to subscribe to it. And don't forget to hit the notification um, bell. You can also follow me on Instagram. Um, and well, 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 thank you for your time. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Au revoir.